it's dumb guy live we're here it's it's dumb guy live 59 and we're we've got we've got we've got a, a scapegoat on the show we've got the final ross jamie ross we've got a jay uso we've got p we've got jay uso um a kenny for your thoughts um off the line cool. member of yuma yeah yeah Mm. Hack yourself. <laughs> He's solo. Uh no, I'm not solo. I'm not. I'm not. I I, I think Solo Sicko legitimately has the worst finisher in all of wrestling. No, dude, the um, Samoan spike. This shit, shit fucking hurt. sucks, bro. You get, a, you get a thumb. Shit fucking sucks. Uh, I'm, solo, uh, I'm I'm Jacob Fatu, because you know I go hard in them streets. And you um, and you've potentially committed a violent crime in your past i buy um, <laughs> that all checks out that all checks out yeah uh, how's it going everybody uh, i'm glad that you're here if you're watching uh who we got who we got here we got on john um oh yeah so get this everybody hold on i need everybody to first of all just like brace yourselves okay yeah. like murph like calm down okay just listen just listen on john you know, he's live. He's live in Tokyo right now. Okay. He's on Japanese Wall Street or whatever. He's being, re- he's getting a report that the yen is down. All right. Now, if you need to take a second to sort of, I don't know, just compose yourself after that, then I understand. But through our own sourcing that we have, um, you know, through through our well connected promotions, we have an we have an in with Osaka Pro, you know, we have an in with Itabashi Pro Wrestling, we have an in with a lot of other promotions with Tradition. I'm a big Fujinami uh, uh, associate, and we can corroborate the report. Uh, that, do not do not uh, forget Ryukyu Dragon Pro Wrestling too. Uh, Ryukyu Dragon Pro, Ryukyu Dragon Pro, Gurukun Mask is is a big fan of the show. Sure, Joe, but. Unfortunately, the yen is in fact down. Um, I know that's going to be that's going to be some really difficult, really difficult news for a lot of people to hear that the yen is down. I know that somehow has like an impact on how you watch professional wrestling for some reason. And um, you know, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just kind of Jamie, it's, can you take over? I'm so, I'm sorry. You no, know, it's it's tough, man. We you know this is what you say episode episode fifty nine. Here we we've been doing this thing for a while now. We 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 pour our hearts out every week about Japanese professional wrestling, and to hear the their economy over there is just tanking right now. It just you know it makes it just feel like what what you know what was all this for? You know, if we made no real change. There's there's things aren't on the up. Like it's like what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. It's like you know. How, we've, what are we doing, man? It's we, we need to we need to figure this out. <laughs> we, we need to we need to make a change here somehow. The solution might be on the horizon. Yes, with a brand new <laughs> wrestling promotion. Yes, from from the big Ross man himself, Marigold. Pro wrestling. Woo. Well, we don't add pro wrestling. Is it? I, I added that. It's Marigold. It's like stardom. It's, yeah. There's like a it's long terrible. name, I think. It's Dream yeah. Dream Star Fighting Marigold. It's, yeah, it's World it. One. It's World Wonder Ring Marigold. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, names. We're uh, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna kick off the show. That is Marigold, big, big Ross man. You've done it again, and you've made yourself the main event of dumb guy live on the same weekend that we saw the iwgp world championships change hands we're just kicking off with marigold so jamie i'm gonna ask you to sort of set the stage for everything and just sort of we had the press conference what you know about almost 48 hours ago at this point right Mm -hmm. we got all the details we got the rosters we got quotes from just about everybody we we got uh a lot of new faces that some people mm-hmm. didn't necessarily expect seeing. Um, so just give us give us a from the top sort of overarching report on like what what is this promotion? What is its status right now? And then we can get into the weeds and talk about uh, what we think about each individual aspect. 
Yeah, so as I said, the full title, Dream Star Fighting Marigold. And obviously we knew the day beforehand where this this um, press conference would be streamed and it was Wrestle Universe. And I think that was very exciting for a lot of people in terms of accessibility, but I'll get into that in a moment. But we obviously, we kick off with Rossi Ogawa doing the announcements. We see the see the logo and then he brings out the roster or the initial roster. Um, and we get the five confirmed names that we, we all assumed. We get Julia, we get Utami Hash, then we get... Mirai, we get Mai Sakurai, and we get Yuzuki, now going by Victoria Yuzuki, which is certainly an interesting name. Um, then we also get Nanai Takahashi, who is another one who we were kind of expecting. And then one that came a little bit out of left field, now Ishikawa, obviously former, formerly mm-hmm. Nakano on New Blood, and obviously formerly of Ice, Ice Ribbon before that. Um, so that, that was our base, base seven, um, the kind of locked in. Um, Marigold roster, and those are the seven that are on the website, you know, fully confirmed and announced on all the photos. Um, and then shortly after that, um, we had as they're taking kind of the closing, the closing picture, um, all together. Fuka of Actress Girls, the, the, the advisor over there, um, brings along six um, Actress Girls talents, and obviously, before the um, around half an hour or, or maybe a little bit longer before. Um, the press conference itself, Actress Girls put out a statement, um, mm-hmm. essentially <laughs> revealing that Fuka and six, uh, I, I believe they didn't name them at the time, but six unnamed uh, talents had, had left the promotion immediately um, and, and had been speaking with a, an unannounced promotion, which obviously we kind of got the gist of where that was heading uh, when that when that was revealed. Um but uh, it also seemed like it was very unexpected on, on their end and, and kind of like um, they, they, they felt a little bit betrayed by it. But the names were uh, off the top of my head and I'm not uh, an actress, girls fan by any means. So um, we had mm-hmm. Natsumi Sumikawa, who is interestingly, obviously a former um, stardom, uh, goddess of stardom champion. Uh, and, and more interestingly, is the current actress um girls singles mm-hmm. champion or at least she was i assume that's that's now been <laughs> relinquished but she only won that belt 22 days ago which is very um it's interesting it kind of shows that they, they didn't know what was coming um we also had miku aono the first singles champion over there we had koki who um again i've not seen a, a ton of but everything i see of her people seem to be super excited by her joining um we had chiaka um, another one who again I'm not too familiar with. We had Chika Goto and Misa Matsui, who seems to be a bit of a, a high speed sort of style wrestler. Um, but yeah, and then we obviously had so so that was kind of the, the actress girl side of things. We had the announcement of the first um, the first show on May twentieth, which will a Corican Hall, which will be titled Marigold Fields Forever, and that will see Julia and a mystery partner taking on Suri and a mystery partner Suri was present at the press conference. Um, we also think we're going to get Nanai versus Yuzuki at that mm-hmm. show by the sound of it. Um, and from there, we just had uh, a few more show announcements for the for the next kind of month or so. Uh, and then there was an appearance on No, but we'll get to that shortly after. But that's kind of, uh, unless I'm forgetting anything, everything off the top of my head that we know about this promotion so far. It'll also be streaming on Wrestle Universe as we expected. Yeah. It's Japanese and English commentary, which I can only assume will be Stuart Fulton and Sonny Gutierrez, based off the, the, the kind of person that we know is involved. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. We'll talk more about you know, your guys' initial thoughts. I kind of know where Mayor sat on it, but if you want to you kick us off, if the people are awaiting your opinions. Yeah, Murph, uh, Murph, Murph, just uh, what, what, you're not the biggest Joshi guy, generally speaking. And you have certain thoughts on Rossi Ogawa's him out the the people the people are ready now i i, I want to so jamie you're a big fan correct yes you're, you're very in favor of this yes. oh, but i, I want to hear p's thoughts first because I, I think he's like i feel like he's <laughs> going to be the middle ground of wherever me and jamie are so i kind of want to hear p's thoughts first we're just throwing the you. ball around someone someone you know take it away but <laughs> yeah <laughs> take it away from who we got it uh okay all right all right all right let's break um no. So, first of all, just to take a step back six months, um, I'm not happy that this promotion exists because mm-hmm. I think Stardom had the greatest of women's talent that any promotion has ever had. Uh, and that includes 
you know, all of course, I think all Japan women did a lot more in the ring that like, you know, elevated their stuff beyond a lot of what stardom was doing. But I think top to bottom, when you were able to have, you know, you know, up to 20 main event caliber wrestlers on a roster, um, you're one of the best rosters we've ever seen. Um, so I'm pretty, you know, I'm disappointed that this promotion even exists in the first place. I just kind of wish that whatever disagreements Awa had with Bushy Road management and everything, that, that could have been smoothed over because I think that when you combine somebody with the booking prowess and obviously the the passion and love for Joshi wrestling that Ogawa has with um with the funds and resources and backing and promotion skills that a have uh, we saw the results uh, post pandemic they were literally the literally the only pro wrestling promotion in Japan to grow during the pandemic um and uh, I th- and I think the combination of those two things was the big reason why. Um, that, that Utami Hayashishida and Mika, the same promotion, for example, right? Um, I'm disappointed that Julia is going to, you know, had like kind of a, a meek end to her stardom career and is now going to do like a weird pit stop type deal here in, in Marigold and then go to WWE, right? Um, stuff that is that I, I just like I'm, I'm getting I'm still getting over the fact that this promotion even has to exist in the first place like yeah. I'd rather see Yuzuki just grow as a, as a wrestler Victoria Yuzuki I should say just grow as a wrestler um, do the Hanan thing maybe a little bit more accelerated than that but um, just keep going over time right um, you know so so that's that's sort of my overarching thoughts that I have to get over when I'm talking about this with that being said um they're doing about as well as i think they could have right now like they're they the the talent that they were able to get from stardom again you stardom it made like you're in the top you're in the top promotion in japan you're making a lot on merch you uh have the international exposure through the bushy road partnership right um stardom is a good place to be if you're a joshi wrestler um so for them, so for uh, Marigold to get, of course, Julia. Julia is, I kind of sort of so-so because she's obviously leaving no matter what. But to get Utami, to get Mirai, to get Kahashi, who um, is still a big deal. Um, to get my Sakurai, who was getting some of the loudest reactions in the company. To get Yuzuki, Victoria Yuzuki, who, uh, aside from Hanan, is probably the hottest up-and-comer that Stardom has had in years and years, right? Um, and uh, and to, just to, to to poach them, I, I I should stop. I hate the word poach, by the way. I was just sort of de- defaulted to that. Like, it takes away the agency of the people involved. Um, but then, not only that, I'm really excited about these actress girls wrestlers. I'm really excited that they're in here because actress girls is a little bit like TJPW in that it's just not really the style of wrestling that I want. They kind of mm-hmm. moved away. So like four years ago, like pre pandemic, I really liked act- actress girls. They had a strong roster wrestlers on it. Um, and then they kind of did like a rebrand type deal where they went away for a while when they came back, they only had like, you know, a half dozen members of the same roster uh, that they had before. A lot of brand new people and, uh, a the- you know, did like a mix of theatrical slash wrestling stuff. And they've gotten more to be a traditional wrestling company over the last few, uh, over the last year or so, I'd say. But still, it's still not, you know, a lot of focus on comedy, a lot of focus on just sort of crowd pleasing stuff, being like cute girls, you know, and less on high high profile wrestling right yeah. um Kwame has a great comment by the way this is this is like where i fell in love with like Miyuki Takase as a wrestler um and i don't think it's co- it's a coincidence coincidence that since actress girls went under Miyuki Takase i think has been like really like boring and middling um but uh but from what i've seen and i again i watched so little of of you know if if Asahi couldn't get me to watch actress girls then like nobody was going to but <laughs> yeah. um the uh but from what i've seen like clips and just people who i trust their evaluations of these wrestlers these wrestlers have some potential right Mm -hmm. this is two they've had three world champions actress girls since the rebrand two of them are going to marigold 
<laughs> right. mm-hmm. including the current one, as, as you alluded to. Um, Michigan in there too, but they all kind of seem to fit the stardom mold. Um, for me, as I'm sure it is for a lot of people, it's really at the end of the day, it's all about the wrestlers. That's really all I care about at the end of the day. And uh, we that was our biggest question a couple of weeks ago. I remember we did a, we did a pod. I think it was just you two, or us two, I should say, um, Jamie, where we just sort of talked about what we were worried about. And we were just like, what's this roster going to be? Mm-hmm. And I think they've done about as well as you could have expected them yeah. to do. Uh, considering the circumstances they were given. So that's my overarching thought is I'm feeling better about the promotion than I did. And I'm slightly more encouraged that we're going to have at the prospect of having two really good uh, Joshi promotions. Now, Mm -hmm. with that being said, I would have preferred to just have the one with all the great wrestlers on it. Um, But, uh, but this is, this is good. This is good so far, but we're already seeing the trade-off too right like uh all-star dream queendom which we'll we'll go over that card after we talk about marigold is uh cards nowhere near as strong as it was the last few years yeah so uh so yeah what what else uh what, what should we sort of dive into here jamie okay yeah, well, my well, thoughts now yeah i was gonna say yeah I, go, yeah, go ahead now I'll, go ahead, and and I'll, I'll kind of get a bit, bit, bit more into it but take it away i'm gonna start this off and i'm gonna i'm gonna give some quotes i'm not gonna say who these quotes are from it's it's up to the the viewer to um you know think about them and and then I'll reveal later who they're from. She won't get enough fans if she stays like this. She doesn't have enough fans. The reason why is she's a kid, but she has the face of an adult. She acts like an adult. She won't get enough fans acting like that. There's another one called Starlight Kid. She's ten times more popular than her. <laughs> that quote is about a 16-year-old, 16, 16 16-year-old 16 Azumi, who, coincidentally, now that this schmuck's gone from his company, uh, made her national television uh, national television debut uh, last week. That's a good point. Um, those quotes, my friend, are from Rossi Ogawa. Uh, Rossi Ogawa is a man who uh, has made a living. Um, and and I, actually, I have one more quote. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm not gonna give it verbatim because I don't have it on me. But we are looking for uh, young women, unmarried, uh, thirteen to thirty. I believe was was the exact quote. It's fucking cool. so that's that's an, that's another that's another quote from uh, Rossi Ogawa. Okay, uh, Rossi, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off because I want to talk about that really quickly. Like, bro, okay, if you're listening to this, you probably are, like, at least cursorily, like, a fan of Joshi Wrestling. Okay, here's the deal. Whether whether you agree with it or not, like, whether you think that's, like, a good, like, practice to have, which I haven't really, frankly, given it much thought, is that's literally every Joshi promotion ever exists. Exactly. Okay? Like, that's, the, like, like you're that, just being honest. <laughs> you just don't, like, and I get it if you're not, like, kind of a freak. And, well, and what happened with, with what stuff, after Bushiro had butt stardom? Did they have any kid, people under 18? Well, not no. debuted, but they were training before 18. Like, they weren't. Yeah, but they, but they, they, weren't, but they weren't training for after, you know, they were probably 17. I mean, Jesus, there's right. guys playing in the, the Champions League at 17. But not, right. not 12 years old. 13, 13 years old? Are you fucking shitting me? Okay, but that's right. against the point. Here, here, here's what I'm saying here. If you like, you know, photo books with, you know, 14, 15 years old people in uh, in bathing suits, you know, like, you know, Joshi City, uh, if, you, if that's kind of your thing, Marigold will be the promotion for you. Because uh, Rossi Ogawa, for years on years on years, has exploited very young girls. And uh, it wasn't until uh, Bushy Road, a, uh, a corporation, uh, bought Stardom, and they were like, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, we're selling 15-year-old in bikinis to grown men. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're debuting girls at 12 years old before they've even like, gone into puberty. Are you shitting me? I mean, this, this is like, Rossi Ogawa is like from a generation, you know. That I, I just I just do not agree with because that the fact of the matter is professional wrestling is 
it's a it's a business and and it's a business that 15 year olds shouldn't be being exploited especially you know in joshi wrestling where uh what's it called you're you're it, the the let's be real most joshi fans in japan are middle-aged men it's middle-aged men that you know think they're attractive that's changed ever since stardom you know has evolved there have been more female fans it's been showing actually it's a lot of uh a lot of Dragon Gate fans have actually been getting into stardom because of uh, the some of the the women who have adopted similar styles. But the fact of the matter is, Rossi Ogawa is a man who's come. It's it's an outdated philosophy, and basically, stardom. What I, what I don't under, I don't know the exact reason he left stardom. I don't. But the, here, this is the the first thing I'm going to get into. I, I don't agree with his mindset, and I'm a, I hope that this doesn't happen with Marigold. I hope he doesn't have these books and does all this exploit exploitative stuff with Marigold, but I have no reason to believe he won't. The second thing that uh, I, I'm not a big fan of Marigold, uh, I, I, I'm not a dumb person, you know, I'm not the smartest person, you know, I've gotten like a C before, you know, I'm not the smartest guy, but the fact of the matter is, is if you don't think fucking WWE and Paul Levesque are involved in this, I got a fucking bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Are you fucking shitting me? Uh, yeah, I'm going to fly over Rossi and the girl who's literally working for Rossi after we signed a contract with her and put him in a, a ringside at TakeOver, put him in a box at fucking WrestleMania, and you're, you're telling me that this promotion is operating, you know, just by itself. It's just, it's, it's, it has no affiliation. And what did Ro- here's another quote. Rossi says, I, I intend for us to be at WWE Ranch. You fucking shit me. I mean, just what are you, Dave Schultz, fuck catcher? I mean, it's a ranch. I mean, it's a ranch just for, you know, guy. Like, this promotion is a theater promotion for WWE. So don't get too attached to these people. You know, WWE's going to be coming for them. And how I remember in 2020 when WWE was probably going to do some shit with all Japan for the first time. The second time was nothing. That shit didn't do anything. We were, sky is falling for nothing over that shit. But WWE was actually, you know, NXT Japan was going to happen. COVID, you know, one of the great things about COVID, no NXT Japan. Hey, I'd be scared. The WWE wants their hands on everything, guys. And uh, what 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 did uh what what did Rossi uh what did what did what did Rossi um who did he invite to one of his shows? Oh yeah, uh, Eo Sky and uh, Kyrie Sane, Kyrie Sane. And um, Notice they didn't invite Oscar because Oscar is a very smart person and knows that Rossi's a fucking piece of shit. So they didn't invite Oscar because you know Oscar <laughs> knows what she's talking about. Um, that's actually a true story. They do have beef, but the fact of the matter is, is I, I just have no interest in supporting an, a child exploitative, uh, you know, WWE backed promotion when you have stardom run by the great Taro Okada. Toro Kata, what a guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's led a renaissance for this promotion. I mean, geez. The all-star grand queendom. What a, what a card that looks like. <laughs> Fuck you off. Know, that, that, <laughs> that, card looks, that card looks yeah, amazing. I mean, Take God. Mike, Micah, and, Micah, you got Is Micah. You got, you, you got Micah in the main event facing against who? Who? The person that Rossi thought was a fat Fuck. Momo Watanabe. What a great rise that Momo, after Rossi is gone from their company, is main eventing one of the biggest shows of the year for stardom. So I'll, 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 I'll leave, with the, leave you with this. If you support, you know, the stuff I talked about earlier, if you support Saudi Arabia, you know, if you support, you know, a, a class action lawsuit with something pretty bad, uh, Mary Gold. That's for you. If you support, you know, a great wrestling promotion with history, with a great leader in Taro Okada, with a great young core, and a great working relationship with a great company in the U.S., support stardom. Ichiban! I like that Murph has more of a problem with, uh, with like, and again, to be clear, it's all bad, but, like, Murph has more of a problem with the with the bikini photo books than uh than with rick flair literally admitting to be a 
like, yeah. like an abuse. Yeah, I was going to say, I, that, that was about to be my yeah. thought. I was about to say, I, I, I've talked many times about how I, I, I disavow everything having to do with there, but, you know, that's that's one bad thing versus a lot of bad things. But that's against the point. Listen, it's we know we know where Murph's coming from. It's Murph's coming from Tony Khan. <laughs> that's that's where Murph's coming from. So I didn't expect anything anything else outside of that. The WWE thing is like like AEW are going to be involved with Stardom. Like I didn't ever particularly want that, <laughs> you know. So yeah. it's not. It's like I don't I don't care for either of them, but like EO and Kyrie making appearances would be fine. Like, like that, that, that would be, be cool, especially if Mayu ends up there. Like, we might get a freedom reunion at some point, which, you know, would be cool. Um, the ranch thing is like, like, I've, you know, I've seen, I've seen a few different translations of it, but even like, even like, let's say that's exactly what he said, right? I just don't buy that that's like how it's going to pan out, like, at all. Like, Rossi, when Rossi was like fully in charge of stardom, like, you look at the names who like went to, um, WWE, and it, it, it it's not like they were just leaving, you know, constantly. They they had a, a few big people come and go, but they always like bounce back from it, and it was never like a mass, you know, like like a pipeline or that. It's that's not how it's gonna pan out at all. Uh, at least I don't think so. Um, there's no there's there's no direct sponsorship from their end off cyber fight, um, as it stands. So you know, it, it's it's like. If you know, if you're very, you know, strictly anti WWE and then more on the AEW side, I, I kind of understand why people are, you know, against it. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, there's going to be American involvement in both of these companies now. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit. I, I want to kind of come at it from the opposite angle. Talk about how excited I am. <laughs> Can't do. Yeah, go for do it. One eighty. A one eighty on there. I'm, I'm you see, that, you see that's what I. That's there. what I like because you know I know you're very excited for it. I know Parker's indifferent. I, I, I like viewpoints. Viewpoints is good for the show. Well, you gotta, I'm going to cut you off real quick because we got a couple of super chats. On. This one is like a complete non sequitur, but it's funny. We have two Canadian dollars from Un- Andravis Gaming. <laughs> what do you think of what you guys think of Adam, Cop- Adam Copeland and AEW? What you guys well, think? Yeah. I, I, have, I, I haven't like... seen a single match of his. Uh, the so Cope Open. The Cope Open. Yeah, yeah, he's he's having really great matches. Um, I like him. I like him. It's 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 nice seeing him doing something like different. It's like a fish in water. Will so the man who beat Chris Batten twice strikes back. Uh, what do you think the ceiling is for Marigold? Well, let's make this the last thing we talk about with the with the promotion. Okay. Like, where do you where do we think this goes from here? So we're gonna circle back to this one. The man who beat Chris Batten twice strikes back. Uh, WP Fabrizio Romano. Breaking news, Marigold Mystery Partners said to be Soul Ruka and Lash Legend. Wow. Well, here we go soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Soul Ruka working I'm, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I've never I, you could show you could give me a lineup of, of women and I could not pick out Soul Ruka for you. So I could probably pick out Lash Legend. Murph should win a Pulitzer. This is five dollars super chat from Shaitan Spurs. Murph should win a Pulitzer. I don't know if that's a thing for Rams. Uh, that's like a, Pul- a Pulitzer is actually fo- photography, and I'm I'm not much of a a, a cameraman, but uh, you know, it's not. I thought it was. <laughs> there is a Pulitzer Prize Photog- for yeah. Photography. photography is part of it, but it's writing. It's it's like Pulitzer media. Prize for ranting. Uh, uh yeah, it's it's not it's Andrew. not a thing, but uh, it's not. Dollar ninety nine from Andrew. Sorry, you had to sit through that, Jamie. Well, thankfully, we're I, so Jamie gets to talk about his. I prepared excitement. myself. I knew what was coming. You know, <laughs> he was well aware. Yeah. All right, go for it, Jamie. Son. Yes. So you know, as as I assume, or well, at the point at this point, I'm very excited as as we kind of talk about the roster, um, the names we already knew. A lot. There was a lot of excitement there, especially with with Utami Hash. The, starting with her is kind of like. You know, what you assume to be like the kind of ace figure in this promotion is very exciting because she's one of the best in the world. Um, Yuzuki, Victoria Yuzuki is the best stardom rookie in a long, long time. So having there is a huge coup. But um, the actress ele- element of it, like, like Park said there, is, is super exciting because these are talents who have been in an environment where the, the, the platform they're on is not even entirely like wrestling <laughs> in, a, in a sense it's a lot more performative than your typical wrestling promotion and it's clear from the kind of well the, obviously they've they've made the move you know um 
um, you know, to, to jump to Marigold and you know, kind of read them some of the the reasons and some of the statements and stuff like that. That you know, these these six want to kind of grow as wrestlers, and um, so seeing them in that environment where they're going to develop, um, and especially like even with with um, that being said, in terms of them not being in like a full kind of um, typical wrestling environment beforehand, the potential was already evident with, with a lot of these. Um, so mm-hmm. seeing how they're going to grow. It's going to be super exciting. Fuka's involvement as well, and it's something I've not even seen mentioned like a ton. Um, she's one of like the most prolific, prolific yeah, six, trainers. Six, uh, uh, one of our most, one of our most view- uh, loyal viewers said like really early on in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, in the yeah, here we go. Yeah, so yeah, continue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, like if, if you t- take a look, I mean, it's all available on like Cage Match and stuff like that. Of the list of wrestlers, the Fuka's trained. She was obviously like one of the primary trainers in Stardom. She's one of the three founders of Stardom alongside Rossi and then I Takahashi. And you know, funnily enough, all three of those will be involved in Marigold, which is exciting if you're a fan of you know Stardom, particularly like kind of how they grew in, in the sort of early days. Um, but yeah, another thing that's just kind of like. Um, you know, just just kind of not even involved in like the actual events of the press conference, but just in terms of a new promotion, being able to jump into something from day one is all always really exciting. You know, especially if you weren't um, haven't been with Stardom for too long, and I don't know um, a lot of my a lot of my friends who have kind of jumped on in in kind of recent months. Um, you know, sometimes it feels like they they're, they're missing kind of bits here and there. So I feel I feel like you know a new promotion jumping in is going to be very exciting. Um, and also just the accessibility of it, right? It's Wrestle Universe. It's not a new streaming yeah. service that you have to jump into. It's probably the best streaming service for wrestling overall in terms of like, um, you know, ju- just in terms of like the, what is on offer there, but also like kind of production value of the majority of what, what is available there. Um, you know, you're going to get English commentary too. So if that's something that, uh, I know not everyone opts for the English commentary, but if that's something that makes th- these things more enjoyable, then that's going to be there. And that's something that wasn't, um, you know, pretty much hasn't been a thing in, in stardom outside of a couple um pay-per-views so everything kind of on paper so far as as you said parker at the start has been the best it could possibly be um then you you kind of throw in what we know so far about the the first event, um and having you know julia and suri get in there which is obviously something people were hoping for before julia um makes the move um that's super exciting. <laughs> It'll be weird to see Siri's going to be working to start them, um, pre, you know, pretty close before she works the, the Marigold show. And we'll get into that um, in a moment. But the last kind of thing I want to get into is the um, the, the appearance they made at Noah. Um, <laughs> it was a couple of hours after um, the press conference, Rossi Ogawa um, and Utami, Julia, Mai Sakurai and Mirai. Um, Confronted, or uh, off the top of my head, Takumi Aroha, Nagisa Nozaki, uh, the great Sakuya, and Miyuki Takase, and challenged them to a um, eight woman tag at the Sumo Hall show. I believe it's May 3rd, um, mm-hmm. which is essentially the will, will be the official kind of, um, will, 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 will definitively be the first kind of in ring out and for the Marigold girls. Um, I would I would tend to expect that the four. Um, Noah girls, I know they're not signed Noah talents, but the you know the, they appear frequently across Noah that they're going to have some kind of involvement across these shows too. Um, just just based on the kind of initial involvement there, but we'll see how that kind of develops. But that's that's pretty much everything that we kind of know about this thing so far. I'm very excited. The party seem pretty optimistic so far. Um, Murph, obviously, <laughs> Murph. <laughs> you know, we know Murph's thoughts. I, I, I do want to say, I, I do want to praise Rossi Ogawa real quick. Just real, I, well, I do well, want to praise him. I have some away. praise for him. <laughs> Thank you, Rossi Ogawa, because I'm going to be real with you. There's someone I hate more than Rossi Ogawa in the Joshi world. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. Rossi Ogawa, for making it so I never, ever, ever have to ever see. One of the worst wrestlers to ever walk the earth, Nanai Takahashi, ever again. So thank you, Rossi. I, I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's 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 very nice that you uh, probably thought of me while you were uh, picking out your roster and you took her with you. So thank you. I I really I really appreciate it. So and Rossi, thank you. You know. Yeah. 
And, uh, and we know I, we now have Aja Kong back in Stardom. So Aja Kong in Stardom is pretty cool. Uh, one of one of Russell Pierce Kwame told me that uh, Rossi was not a big fan of Aja Kong and uh, was maybe even a little, uh, you know, bad to her. So you know, I'm I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that happy that everything's working out for everyone. So thank you, Rossi. I'm really excited, like you said, Jamie, about the production. I'm glad that they're on Wrestle Universe. Um, I've literally never had a problem with Wrestle Universe production. I think it's really high values. They just keep adding more to it. It seems to be a perfect match. Um, and I'm glad, you know, my I was worried that they weren't going to add it because it would maybe, in, you know, impinge on like TJPW, for example. But um, obviously that wasn't, uh, didn't appear to be a big concern because uh, every Marigold show will be on Wrestle Universe and much of them live. A um, couple things: um, Sunny Gutierrez being part of uh, of Marigold ostensibly is very questionable to me. I think this guy sucks. Uh, I just think he's like it's better than know, the guy Stardom has. Well, that's why <laughs> I was going to allude to that. But like, I think they're like they're both awful. Like, like I think Sunny like actively detracts from good promotion things, things like that. Like. Um, I don't know, just like posting on the the F4W board openly, um, and uh, just being like, you know, just like clearly trying to get off like certain agendas and things like that. Like, it doesn't feel like I don't know. I should never know who this guy is. Like, I don't want to know who this person is, right? Mm -hmm. And I do, and it's uh, it feels sort of self inflicted. Um, uh, on the flip side, of course, like you said, the guy who runs the social media for Stardom now, Tom Fain, is a fucking transphobe. So, um. He can uh, he can he can get bent as they say, um, so I mean it's you know kind of a wash either way. I guess you just have to be like an insane freak to be that to be that type of person to like go to Japan or whatever and do that. Um, yeah. All right, Murph's gone. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so that's a little that's a little bit concerning. Um, I'm excited for Naoi Shikawa. She's sort of been lost after leaving. The, Naoi Shikawa was kind of interesting because she left ice ribbon like a while ago at this mm -hmm. point um she was just like around like she did new blood um and did some prominent stuff as well she hasn't been in ice ribbon for over a year um and uh just kind of she's just somebody who's been like in the in the limelight or in the very much recently so for like that's kind of interesting um I'm trying to think of what else there is to uh there's to talk about here um yeah i don't know i don't know i think um i think marigold's in a good pretty good spot right now obviously they'll do more to fill out the roster you can't have a roster with just 13 people on it oh i do know i, I, I just remember the big a big part of this we didn't talk about bozilla and the, and the fucking the, the other right, part. right. A few, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, get, run us through those. Uh, right, okay, I need to remember the, the, the names off the top of my head. So I know mm -hmm. off Bozilla is the one that's got a lot of people's attention. Everybody knows Bozilla, yeah, and talent, you know, um, you know, you know, just kind of a beast. Uh, seems to be working in the um, serious promotion, which I think is Alpha Females thing in Germany, and I think she's like the champion over there by the by. What I checked. She's out. had twenty yeah. career matches. Yeah, she she also yeah I think she's like super young right. I think she's like twenty twenty one, mm. which is you know that, that's exciting. <laughs> you know jumping into working with some of the people who are going to be on this roster um, as you're still kind of developing as a talent is always good. Um, Zayda Steele, I believe is is another. Um, I want to say I think she's the American one. There's a Northern Irish one. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's the one I, I forget the name of. Um, Myla Grace. Myla Grace. There you go. Myla Grace. I believe. Made appearances on NXT UK. I remember someone saying, um, mm -hmm. which you know <laughs> sounds about right to me. Um, so you know we'll, we'll see. Um, I, I think it's always interesting when when they bring in, and obviously this happened to Tony Stardom previously. You know, Mariah may be an example when they bring in like talents that aren't super well known, um, and you kind of get to see them develop um, and kind of get that exposure. In, in, you know, in a completely different environment. And there have been some like huge success stories coming out of that. Mariah May, like I said, is, is now like. A main player in AW's women's division. Um, there, there are a ton of examples, of course. They're in WWE and stuff like that now. Um, obviously, Megan Bain, another another uh, big name, is seemingly going to going to be a big thing in AW now too. So, seeing how that kind of um, 
<laughs> works out and develops. I can't. I tend to think that if they're going to bring in a lot of, um, if they're going to do this and bring in some more Gaijin talent, this may be more where um, you see a little bit of a pipeline to the WWE, more so than a lot of the Joshi names. Um, I'm not expecting WWE to kind of scoop up every single Joshi talent <laughs> that, that comes out of, of Marigold, mm. but I could see perhaps if, if someone like a Bozilla or a Zayda Steel kind of develops really well where that kind of connection um, could come in. But it's, it's, it's very early to, to, to kind of speculate on that sort of stuff. It's just kind of going off, the, you know, the kind of rumours and stuff that we've heard um, so far and the different reports. But, yeah, that was the only kind of thing that I think we haven't we haven't touched on up to now. Um, they're they're going to have streamers for the first event. I like streamers. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Woo. That's, woo, streamers. So, yeah, but I think that's pretty much everything in terms of where we're at. I'm very excited. I'm counting down the days to May 20th. The uh, we also know one of the matches that well, part of one of the matches that is going to take place at their first show, right? Um, and now I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, it's Julia and a mystery partner versus Serena, and a mystery partner. Was that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm really curious who the fucking mystery partners would be, but um. You know that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good start, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether those those mystery partners, are kind of additional roster members, perhaps they they would out they would have announced them if they were you know just the typical kind of um, Aragorn names. But we'll see how it develops. I think that the this Noah involvement and the match at Super yeah, that was my thought too because Julia did the Monday Magic thing, and so yeah, that kind of makes me think that that's it feels funny. like those those four freelance talents could definitely find themselves involved. Uh, mm-hmm. In Marigold in some capacity, so maybe maybe like a an Ozaki or, or a Riko Kawahata or someone like that could could fill up one of these spots. Um, but you know we, we'll we'll have to wait and see. The time will tell um, in terms of as well what maybe other kind of of the the smaller Joshi promotions would be willing to kind of um, lend talent to. It seems like they want to be a bit more isolationist um, in their in their approach, like when when they were asked about that sort of thing. So whether you see like. Sendai talent and stuff like that pop up on these shows. I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, we'll we'll see where, where we go from here. But I assume that from from this, we'll kind of jump into the uh, the, the the kind of the stardom <laughs> side of this, and and uh, you know where they stand in terms of their their build to what should be um, one of their biggest shows of the year. <laughs> we had the press conference. Mm-hmm. All right, anything else we need to talk about with uh, with Marigold? Uh, uh, anything here that we're forgetting? I think I think we've been pretty, pretty, pretty comprehensive here. You know, we spent uh, we spent the the whole show on it pretty much. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think we're I think we're good to go. Good to go. We've had a balanced coverage. <laughs> but a very yeah, very, yeah, very for balanced sure. coverage. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, there's what were we gonna circle back? Oh yeah, the ceiling. What do we think about the oh, future? Yes. Like, where does this get to? Where does this get to uh, in the future? Um, I, w- I would say, and obviously I'm one of the most optimistic people <laughs> that you'll find about this thing, mm-hmm. but I think when you look at who's involved, and particularly Rossi and I and, and Fuka, it's hard to not point out that this is where stardom started, <laughs> and kind of, mm-hmm. and they already have a better talent base than the, the pretty much than when, when stardom started. They already have like super developed um, names in some parts, and then obviously the kind of rookies they've brought in are already showing a, a lot of promise. It's hard not to say that they could 100% grow into a similar level um, in terms of their size and with their accessibility on Wrestle Universe. I think that that boosts them a ton. I think if they'd have launched and they'd have been their own um, on their own service, I think it would have been way more difficult to grow. As we yeah, launched. I'm really yeah. glad that I'm so glad that it's on Wrestle Universe. It's it was just, it was the it's big just thing. Perfect. Yeah, it was the best case scenario, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, so I, I find it hard to say that, that, that they're going to be anything other than um, essentially create a sort of big three, <laughs> you know, um, not to mm-hmm. you know shout out to Kendrick Lamar um, mm-hmm. in in the in the Joshi scene uh, alongside Stardom and, and TJPW. Obviously, TJPW being kind of a different sort of product, but in terms of the size and um, viewership, I, I think that's that's the ceiling. And I also think. It's not going to take them very long to get there. 
Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I tend to agree with a lot of what you said. I, a lot of it's going to come down to build, you know, getting some trainees and building up this roster yeah. a little bit. Um, you just, you know, 13, we, like we said, they've done really well with what they've got so far, but 13 is not enough to carry a promotion uh, when yeah. you're trying to run venues like Cork and Hall regularly. Um, but yeah, I mean, can't, can't like really just can't express how good it is to have Wrestle Universe as the streaming service. Like, I was kind of dreading the idea of it being like a you know, actress girls or a C like that where you have yeah. to um you know you, you just have to like buy the pay-per-view on the side and kind of mm-hmm. hope that it works and there's not much of a replay and it's in a foreign language so you don't really understand it um uh, wrestling universe is literally the easiest uh streaming best one out there um and there's already like if you watch joshi wrestling there's a pretty good chance that you already have a subscription to it uh because you watch TJPW. So, um, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of, oh, so yeah, feeling, feel, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. In the future of this promotion, which didn't exist, but knowing the realities of things, I think, I think they've done pretty well. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's stay in the Joshi world. We will do a full preview of this show next week, but they're going to the Yokohama Buntai. That is stardom is going to the Yokohama. They are they are ringing in, all right, um, for a Stardom All Star Grand Queendom, and uh, we're eleven days away, and they've announced only six matches, uh, and most of them are singles matches. So we have a lot of the roster who doesn't have a match right now, um, mm-hmm. but the main event is going to be Micah defending the World of Stardom Championship against Momo Watanabe. Um, I'm going to just risk, list the rest of the matches that we've been out so far as well. Seriano defending the Wonder of Stardom Championship against Hanan. Uh, Mayu Iwatani defending the IWGP Women's Championship against Sari. Aja Khan making her stardom debut, teaming with Kaoru Ito, Ito who is so old, <laughs> against uh, Meltier. This match, is, I'm sorry, guys, this match is going to be terrible. Um, Rina versus Sayaka Kurara for the Future of Stardom Championship god's eye we did get this kind of flew under the radar because of the marigold yeah. stuff but but konami is returning to being a full-time member of the stardom roster um so we will get the god's eye team of shuri konami and ami saray against a, a mystery team two three three tba team members so um, one, one of the one maybe, of the best things about joshi wrestling in the last couple of years is how konami and hazuki have both come back because they were two wrestlers that went away like at two, way too young ages and both of them are just so good. It's like the fact that Konami and Hazuki have both been, found ways to come back and be full time wrestlers. It's really been like a great thing. Yeah, it's been really nice uh, seeing that. So the uh, we've uh, but yeah, we have a lot of wrestlers that don't have a lot of stuff uh, uh, announced yet. Jamie, that's kind of been the topic. The talking point is that you know we've got some super cards over the last few years for this show. This mm-hmm. one so far, the, the Mayu Suri match is kind of the one, and then maybe you could include Haja Kong in this, but is maybe the one thing that is making, you know, bumping up this card a little bit. But yeah. um, I kind of agree. It doesn't feel like a super show right now. Yeah. Um, so also our Grand Queen them last year, and I'm sure this might be the case for a lot of the people in the live chat. So it was my show of the year. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I thought it was a bit top to bottom, super stacked. Um you know, um, especially when you got towards the last stages of that card, it was kind of, you know, killer match after killer match. Um, and, and this one, I think, will have one of the, I expect to be one of the matches of the year in Mayu versus Suri. It's, it's the, you know, in my opinion, the best women's wrestler of all time is against probably the most on-form women's wrestler in the world at the moment in, in Suri. So I think that match is like kind of can't miss um, and mm-hmm. will will absolutely deliver. So... I will be watching, obviously I'll be watching the show anyway, but if you're someone who kind of only tunes in here and there, that is something that I think a lot of people are going to tune in for regardless. Um, but it's definitely nowhere near a stack. The, the world title match, um, as a match, I, I, I really like both talents involved. And I also, I'm kind of excited by um, the increase in speculation and possibility that Momo might win, <laughs> which mm. I love Momo Watanabe. She's one of my favorite women's wrestlers of all time. And I've always wanted to see you know, kind of get a big push and a, and a red belt run. Um, however, this match is going to be like some sort of three stages of hell. Three thing. stages of hell. So it's uh, by the sound of it, I believe 
I don't have it up, but I think it'll be a normal match, a hardcore match, and then last woman stand them, which to me screams House of Torture. Oh, well, those high yeah, vibes. it's good. You know, <laughs> I mean, I got like, I don't know, man. A lot of people are down on that stipulation. I'm like, I'm kind of like, like hyped about it. <laughs> it could I don't be really know. good. It could I know. Be. I'm kind of just like, I'm loving like as long as it's not just like dead. You know what I mean? Like, because there's so yeah. much. Like, there's been so many. If there's one criticism of Stardom, which has been a really stellar promotion recently, is that the the crowds are just not as raucous yeah. as like any other promotion. Um, so, but Yokohama Buntai, like the previous one before it was demolished and rebuilt, uh, was like the best venue in wrestling outside of Korokin. I loved that venue. All Japan would run it all the time. Big Japan would run it all the time. And the Samurai TV production just made it seem like a huge deal. It was always Ice Ribbon's biggest show too. Like they would often run there too. Um, yeah, it was it was a great venue um, and a big one too, spacious one. Uh, it had terrible like ventilation, so the wrestlers would like overheat. They'd like be sweating profusely, and it made it seem like a big like dramatic fight, especially in the main event. Um, I love I love that they're that we have this venue back and i hope it keeps some of the unique character it, yokohama Bun, what it was called is one of those venues where you can just immediately know that you're watching it from that yeah. um from from that really excited about that but along those lines it's got it has to live up to that because if not like could suck like this main event could be really bad yeah just <laughs> bullshit and just like and you know, if if like, Waka is like the third most important person in the in a main event match or something, becomes very like like low uh, low budget almost. Um, but both well, these wrestlers are great. Yes. Um, the uh, it seems like we're set up for Michael wins the first fall, Momo wins the second, and then wins yeah. that the other also. The hell is inherently a really dumb stipulation because the two falls will be like different, like winners. Mm -hmm. Um, because it you know it takes the drama away out of the hardcore aspect, so maybe they'll be intelligent about it and they'll play through it. Um, yeah. straight into last women standing, but uh, but yeah, I'm excited for it, yeah. But outside of that, that match, just kind of like overall, like the absence of a lot of the names on this card is obviously as as being kind of the biggest issue coming out of this, because I think since, you know, in, in kind of recent times, and obviously Taro Okada um, didn't have any kind of experience as a wrestling booker before <laughs> before he assumed this gig. And I want to kind of give him time to get his shit together, you know what I mean? Because he's, he's, he's new to this, but he's in a big spot. Um, and the build to some of these shows so far have, have been a, bit, a bit, little bit messy in, in, in spaces. And I thought this press conference, we're going to have the, you know, I thought... We haven't had like a clear cut direction for for this show outside of a couple of matches, and this is meant to be one of the big kind of the big two or three um, shows of the year for for Stardom. Um, and I thought, okay, well, we'll we'll get the card here at least, and then we can start building to it. And we didn't get the full card, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we're still we're, we're like a week and a bit out, and we're still in a fairly similar position. A, hu a lot of huge names on the roster aren't involved yet. Um, like they announced the. The, the goddess, um, oh sorry, so the 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 god's eye um, trios match, and we don't have a have an opponent and stuff like that. It's like there's a lot of gaps left to be filled, and typically this would have been where we filled them. Um, so it's kind of weird to kind of leave us at that point. The um, the Aja Kong match, like you said, I'm not I'm not particularly like fired up for it. It'd be cool to see her there because it's a, you know it's obviously um, one of the biggest names in in women's wrestling history. Um, in a new environment, which he's not been in, <laughs> in because of like right. you know political reasons and stuff like that. Um, but you know, we saw with the the legend show that Stardom did last year, <laughs> like it doesn't exactly create like must see wrestling. Um, part outside of some cool, you know, unique interaction. So um, it's definitely not. It doesn't seem like it's going to be. Uh, it definitely wasn't the strongest press conference in terms of mapping out what should be a huge show for Stardom. Um, but as we say, there's, there's still some potential very, very high points. Um, 
but we'll have to see. I, and you know, as much as I'm like, you know, evidently from if you follow like, just this podcast and obviously my timeline in the last day or two, I'm obviously very high on the Marigold thing. But Stardom is my favorite promotion of all time. Ideally, both are awesome. <laughs> and like, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop watching Stardom. I'd love for it to be, for it to be great because more wrestling companies that are great means more, more great wrestling. So um, I wanted to succeed. And, and keep succeeding and obviously they have the talent to keep succeeding but it's just about kind of getting back onto kind of the right direction um and i i think and hope they can definitely do that but needs a uh, needs a bit of work we'll obviously give a full detailed preview of the show next week but just sort of uh some thoughts there as we got uh the big matches at least announced for, yes. for the show guys 56 minutes into the show i don't know if you guys remember we got a new IWGP World Heavyweight Championship la- yeah. champion last Friday. Um, kind of a big deal in wrestling. Jamie, the thing we really wanted to happen happened. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> John Moxley, the Death Rider, is the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, he beat uh, Tetsuya Naito uh, at, at Windy City Riot. Very good, Murph. Um, and... Uh, yeah, he did the thing. He hit the Death Rider many times, to- many times, in fact. Yeah, and uh, and won the match. Pin Naito clean in the center of the ring. We got a cool post match angle um, with uh, with uh, with Shota and with Narita, and you know we set up some challengers for him already. And we're, we're th- things are happening in New Japan. Cinema, wrestling. cinema, <laughs> cinema. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, cinema. Um, but uh but yeah so let's put that on pause let's run through this show really quickly i'm not going to talk about the pre-show main card ren narita beats minoru suzuki in like seven minutes this was really weird it was short um suzuki like did his entrance and then he like lost the match um yeah and it was odd uh this is match- new japan feels yeah. really weird right now yeah. If uh, if 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 they had actually like tried and done an, a, like a real ass match, like it could have been great, but it wasn't. Yeah, is it? It was a win for Ren Narita to give him something before mm-hmm. the closing angle, right? Right. Yep. I think I, I think once he as he won that match, I was like, yeah, he's probably a, an upcoming challenger for whoever wins this title. Um, we had a really nice match next. New yes. Japan Strong Women's Championship. Stephanie Vaker making her first defense of that title, uh, defeated Azumi, uh, who made a nice little, fun little stop in the U.S. She was on collision the following night, taking on Tony Storm. Um, but uh, but this was a good one. I like this match a lot. I love Vicar. And I'm so, see, this is why, folks, this is why you watch Japanese indies. This is why you watch Pro Indies. I've been telling people about Stephanie Vicar for a few years now. Yes. She was in Ice Ribbon, and she was great. I literally streamed her world championship match in Discord, and I was like, "Check this out, guys!" And uh, it was great because she's great. And uh, I, I, I hope yeah. that at least a good bit of our uh, our viewers come from the old dumb guy Discord because the old the dumb, dumb guy, guy the dumb guy Discord before we be, we we went into the Russell Pierce Discord. And I don't even know if that Discord even exists anymore. But the fact of the matter is, like, dumb, the dumb guy Discord. That was it. Was a time. It was like summer 2022, I believe. And it was just we were just watching matches. Like we would watch like the most bad shit, insane shit, just because we were bored. Like the dumb guy Discord was pro paradise, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. That I literally don't think I'll ever have as much fun in. And again, I to be clear, this predates dumb guy live. Dumb guy live. Post dates the dumb guy Discord, which post dates dumb guy chats on Wrestle Spaces on on Twitter. Um, all right, so just to just to sort of set the scene. All right, essentially it predates um, me. <laughs> predates me. Yeah, it literally no, predates Jamie. No, legitimately, um, like you would just play a match, but the one rule was no talking because the most annoying. Yeah, shit I was like, was don't what, talk in my ears. Don't say words. There, we would talk um, in the chat during the match and like give our, yeah. our like commentary. But we didn't like. We were just silent, and then every single like sometimes people would just come in and be like, "Wow, what's it?" And like, "Hey, like what?" You know, dumb guy Discord. You know, is, we watch yeah. the matches. We 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 talk about them in the chat. But it was great. It was what a time. Exactly. You know, as, 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 Co- as Cody as Cody says, it was a beautiful time. But you know that you know it was a beautiful time. 
Beautiful time. Yeah. The, watching uh watching Mew versus versus Yuka. Um, that was great. After uh, a, a, immediately after beating Yamash was like she was I she was gonna win the whole fucking didn't she just it was so funny that that was the I think that was probably the um the weekend that I got of calling it the storytelling promotion um. <laughs> Yeah, we watched we ice ribbon from from the ice ribbon dojo, taters. Every single Friday night, it's still on every Friday night, nine thirty uh, nine thirty p.m. Central here in here in the states. Um, I do sometimes, um, but I don't talk about it because I think I literally might be the only American who watches it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so yeah. You think that, but um, they're not. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah um forever she was special that was a good account it was a good twitter account it made good tweets um anyway a little little trip down memory lane but the point being stephanie vacare was uh was one was one diamond in in the rough that we uh that we uncovered in ptv on the dumb guy uh the dumb guy discord and uh she's just continued like her she's had a meteoric rise she's a champion in stardom right now or in new japan technically i guess but, one more um, one more dumb guy discord my, my favorite match we ever watched in the dumb guy discord was uh chucho el rato versus uh oh my god who did he face mr potro you, mr. mr potro that, that oh my ma- oh. god dude that match Remember was how fun so that match good was? That, that match, match is so good. That's like one of the we, wa- that was we one watched of the that matches of that year. We were, we watched that in the Discord. That match was oh my god! That was Chucho. one of the greatest. Me- it was a Mexican indie match. It was amazing. Yes. So all right, all right, I got to talk about this. I got to talk about this, folks. So Chucho El Roto versus Mister Potro. I've never heard of these people. And if you tell me that you have, you're lying to me because that's not true. Um, they it's it's uh what what was the promotion it was it a uh, a u l l it's not c m l l it's a u l i'm i'm, I'm, I'm finding it he's gonna find it i still don't think mr potro has a cage match profile um but uh so it's the main event it's their i, I found it he has a u l l in uh tel, tel, please excuse my my uh it was talal napantla talal napantla all right uh, now was, i gotta now i gotta find this is it uh, Arena, Arena Lopez Mateos? Oh, Arena Lopez Mateos. Um, but yeah. Uh, oh, Alliance uh, Alianza Universal de Lucha Libre. Uh, oh, it's like it's that, college, it's it's like college one, lucha. It's like that Andrade clip that we that we play on this. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Here, folks. Where is it? Is it twenty twenty two? Twenty twenty one. Uh, it was, uh, Mar- uh, May 15th, 2021. May 15th, 2021. Yes, Aniversario Elena Lopez. En Tiene Pantla, Estado de México. Mexico. Uh, sí, sí, sí. So they, they, they're clearly like, it's their big show, right? It's their big show that they do every year. Um, and uh, event, you know, they're obviously games. It's Blue Demon Jr. Jode Dr. Wagner Jr., right? Uh, yeah, world heavyweight champion in pro wrestling, Penta, El Cero, El, and uh, and of course this fuckers in it, Diamante Tiazul, who just who's who's such a bad fucking wrestler, but he just he's one of, like a he's like Cibernetico, he finds his way into shit. You know what I mean? He was right. Um, do a four way. Somehow the four way ends in DQ in the semi main event, and then the main event. Oh, good, Mr. Potro does have a cage match page. He has sixty one career matches. Um, event. It was mas- mascara mascara. All right, Mr. Potro versus Chucho El Roto. All right, um, Chucho El Roto, forty three years old. He's been wrestling since. Like tw- 2008, he's he's a vet, and then he's got the up and comer Mr. Potro taking him on, and lo and behold, one of them has Penta in their corner, and the other one has Blue Demon Junior Junior in their corner, and we're in we're in 
we're we're in the we're in the weeds here, folks. And then they wrestle for like 45 minutes. And Blue Dumont Jr. gets involved and Penta gets involved and everybody's bleeding and everybody's diving off balconies. And it's like a it's like half of a high school gym. And it is uh it was incredible. And uh, at the end of the day, Chucho El Roto, after six, after 15 years of service in wrestling, gives up his mask, loses to Senor Potro. As far as I can tell, has wrestled only four matches since then. <laughs> so, like, why? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, what a good match. Stars. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a long time. That was that match was in my top ten matches of 20, uh, 2021. and I de- I submitted it as such on my like VOW match of the year ballot. So yes, Stephanie Vaquer beats Azumi. Uh, it was a good match. I'm gonna move on. I know you didn't get to talk about it, but let's uh, let's just move on. Yeah, let's keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> we had the New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Titles up for grabs, and yes, we got a title change. No more fucking God. I'm tired of that shit uh tmdk for the first time in new japan are tag champions in some capacity um fred rossler and tom lawler and the rest the west coast wrecking crew were the other teams in the match it was fine it was like under 10 minutes but it was a good match it was a good match like nothing nothing to complain about and i was really happy with the title change yeah the match was nothing too special it kind of sends it around like the, the west coast wrecking crew and their thing with with tom lawler obviously they, they they turned on him fully after the match but um tmdk with the best tag team in this so i'm happy that they emerged with the belts and they kind of um you know they they, they deserve a little something because the, the new japan tag division is not great so i'm happy to see them with at least one of the one of the two sets of belts all right we also had one of the most newsworthy, I would say, segments of this show, Shota Umino defeating the Jungle Boy. No, just kidding. The scapegoat, Jack Perry. Turn it on, Murph. Let me see your face. He'll, he'll, he'll come back to us. There. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that. Um, they did. Yeah, hold on. They did. Yeah, they did, in fact, shave uh, Tom's hair and feed it to Fred. It was a, a weird sort of hair switch situation going on with that team uh but yes uh jack perry this is in chicago of course he comes out he's a star like they they love him they love the scapegoat um and i thought this match was great uh because it had great heat umino was a really good foil um i'm really ready for umino to stop fucking worrying about heels like i'm ready for him to just be like a wrestler he he seems so tortured (laughs) right now (laughs) but uh but even so, I thought this match was really good, really hot. Um, crowd elevated it a ton, and uh, Umino got the win, setting up him as another potential future challenger to John Moxley. That was awesome. What a match that was. I mean, it, it wasn't even like really the match, it's just that match had so much heat, like to it. Just like the entrance was so crazy. I mean, the 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 reaction to to Perry and Perry coming out with the the Chicago flag and the cry me the river thing, you know, I I've talked about in the last year, how much I'm not a big fan of the work shoot. And that's honestly, I love MJF, but MJF kind of just ruined it for me, all the work shoot stuff. But, um, Perry just, I mean, what does Perry have to lose by doing this? Like, what is he like? Like, this is great. It's a great heat. And I think this is the end of the Perry new Japan run. Uh, I think we all know where where Perry what Perry will be doing probably this weekend, um, but I mean what a what a what a what a small productive what a productive run it was like and if this is not the end like is is do we know if it's the end is it the end I don't I don't, I don't, know. I don't know that it's the end it's, it seemed I, like it it seems like it it seemed like the like watching the show it seemed like the end of the scapegoat in New Japan I, I selfishly. I wish he stayed in New Japan a little bit longer. I understand that he is, if he's going back to his parent promotion and they like him again, they don't fucking hate his guts and they're using him for this storyline, then it's understandable. But I, I would have liked to see Perry in New Japan just a little more. But what's it called? This was – people forget because of all the shit that happened over the last year. But Jack Perry is a tremendous professional wrestler. I mean, if you go back to his tag title run, if you go back to his matches with Kenny Omega, with Christian Cage, 
with Luchasaurus in the in the steel cage, with uh, the Four Pillars match. Jack Perry's an amazing belt to belt wrestler, and I wish he stuck around to do a G1. Maybe he still will. I don't know. But if this is the end of Jack Perry in New Japan, then it was a very productive three month run. Yeah, I I love this match too. It was um when they when they showed the footage on <laughs> on AEW, I was kind of I wasn't I wasn't too sure about it, and I, and I don't really have a dog in the fight. I, I like all sides involved. Um, but coming out of it and, and then coming into this, um, and you know, if you assume that he's going to end up with the with the EVPs, <laughs> I think it's I think it's worked for everyone that it was supposed to work for. Um, in that regard, in terms of in terms of Jack Perry, because he came out feeling like a star, and obviously the atmosphere was super special. Um, but I, I want to praise both of them in terms of th- they managed to obviously, and obviously the crowd was was electric for it, but they managed to translate that into the match too. Like 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 they they were able to work the match in a way where they they utilized it a ton, um, and it wasn't just kind of the cra- a hot crowd for a for a, a kind of average match. They 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 kind of built it in. Um, I made it something really special. So. Um, shout out to both of them. Obviously, a big win for Shota, who's going to get um, big things moving forward. And obviously, Jack heading back to AW, you assume. But very, very successful out for everyone involved. We had another match here uh, that was pretty high profile in a, in a, a, I would say, a slightly surprising result, or maybe not. You know, not not a foregone conclusion on who was going to win. We had Mustafa Ali beating Hiromu Takahashi, the ace of New Japan's junior division. Um, I thought this was I. I thought the, the once they actually started wrestling, it was good. They did some like Daryl comedy shit, which is just like not for me at all. Like it felt very low rent indie level stuff. Leave um, it in twenty eighteen. Well, even just like or just never do it ever because it's stupid. <laughs> like I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know I was yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, I thought this was all right. I thought it was, thought it was good. Uh, but Mustafa Ali looks like he's he's sticking around. They don't just give they don't just let people beat Hiromu for no reason. Um, so he's probably he's probably going to be somebody who shows up on these America shows a decent amount. I I, I really thought Mustafa was going to leave WWE and like turn like I he always like was like this guy who had all this ring talent and he was just waiting to show it and he just hasn't shown me it yet. Like I just. This like in his, what I've seen from his indie run and what I've seen from what he did in this match, I'm just not impressed. I don't know if it's the gimmick. I don't know if he's just trying to work a style, but he's just not where I expected him to be. Is what I'd say. Yeah, I I kind of touched on it last week when we were um, previewing this card. Um, I, I I was pretty disappointed with this match because I thought that this should have been one that. Um, really got got kind of Ali's post WWE run going. But I, I kind of think that the the idea of Ali uh, <laughs> outgrew Ali <laughs> in terms of he, he was a guy that for so long, you know, WWE fans and people outside of WWE were kind of like, this guy needs to, to go out there and get some more opportunities. And, and I think that that became such a big thing and so overblown that the assumption was that he was going to go on like some crazy tear. Um, and I just never saw him as that guy. Um, even on 205 Live, I didn't think he was like the the guy <laughs> on the show at any point. Um, so, you know, I, I haven't been like incredibly surprised, but I thought here would be the opportunity against Hiromu to kind of, you know, get going on, on that path. Um, and I want to say Hiromu didn't exactly show up to play ball either. <laughs> so it's not like a totally one-sided like um, thing. Um, and they had nice moments, as, as you said, when they, when they, when they kind of got going. Um, but I, I, I left this feeling a little bit let down and no more excited um, for Ali's kind of post WWE run than I did coming in, which is unfortunate. We had a, uh, a Riot Rules match. Um, get this. The mystery part for, for Gabe Kidd were, were the bullet... No. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Everybody just calm down. Uh Get this, one of them is Kingston was homicide. Um, <laughs> I know that's gonna that's gonna blow your mind. We did have some Jeff Cobb and T a little a little coda on the Bullet Club versus Empire feud from earlier this year. Uh, that was kind of nothing. It was a uh, brawling and the electric stuff is between Gabe Kid and Eddie King, but like anytime it was somebody else, it just didn't match that match that energy. Um 
and uh, you know someone like like homicide i can take or leave in 2024 dave finley sucks <laughs> he's the shitter yeah. of the year um so uh so i don't know i don't know was, i'm just i'm ready for them to actually just do the match and then be done yeah the, the, this match just made me think like they could have just done the match here you know <laughs> as like a co-main event that would have been good they, they announced the match right for resurgence yes yeah yeah it's gonna happen no it's like a no ropes death match or something like that right right no ropes yeah. So are they, if it's no ropes, are they going to work it like a blood sport match? Or are they going to work it like a like a blood brawl? Like a like how are they going to work it? That's my question. It's going to be no DQ. It's going to be like it's going to be no DQ. It's going to be like a. That's like the, a, when I think of, when I think of no ropes, I think of like blood sport. But if it's no DQ, then that'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be no DQ. It'll be like what they would like. Uh, who was it? Yamato and who else? Kai in Dragon Gate a few years ago. Yes, no. yes, Kai and Yamato. Yes. Yeah, it'll be like that. But uh, but yeah. So yeah, that, 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 that's report. actually a great. That's a that's a great callback. I know my shit. What can I say? Um, I thought the next match was great. I really liked this match, and I, I didn't see a lot of people talking about it weirdly enough. But uh, I thought Zack Saber Jr. versus Matt Riddle was a, was like the second best match on the show for me. Um, I thought Shota versus Jack was actually ended up being my favorite match on the show. Uh, but I thought Riddle versus Zach was great. Like this was the first time in a long time that it really, to me, felt like, you know, w- within WWE slash pre WWE. Last Riddle. man standing. So that'll be that'll be sick. Last man standing. Last man standing. No ropes. Um. So. Uh, so yeah, I thought this was really fun. Um the just nice and you know tons of back and forth counters at the end uh, i thought they were going to go to a time limit draw and then they didn't saber did get the win and so i thought that was a good use of booking uh, by the way i think more promotions should should utilize the time limit draw to get finishes close to it like uh, especially that's why that's like the genius in having a title like this that has a 15 minute time limit um so i thought that was really good but i thought riddle looked great now of course riddle he had to be like an idiot and like pop up and then just leave you after the match but it kind of made sense because he wasn't like pinned with like the zach driver or something it was just a roll up um but uh feels like riddle's done in new japan yeah. uh at least for for the time being um and uh, saber is back to being the television champion my question is why did saber lose in the first place if we're right back here four months later but you know this is a good, Matt good match. That's okay. Yeah. My 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 assumption is that Riddle has left. I mean, you know what type of character Riddle is. I assume maybe his time in New Japan has come to, <laughs> to come to an end quicker than maybe it was anticipated, and they've they've just hot shot to the back to Zach. Because I, I assume when he dropped it, he was gonna get a bit more of a push than he has done. So maybe Zach doesn't have it for too long. Um but yeah, I also do you think Matt do you think Riddle's going back? Back, no, <laughs> I don't think, but back to the week. I don't I think, think that's I don't, ever happened. I mean, it, it, crazier things have happened. It's, I'm, it's just a question. I mean, they, they've brought in back guys on that like weird level. It's just a question. I don't know. I, I don't, see, I don't, okay. I don't have, see, like, um, Pips is sending this that says that he in the belt in the Indies, but wasn't it like a Hey, fucking Fujita, <laughs> like, like I don't understand this. Wasn't the ML, people are mad about the MLW, the the MLW stuff, um, but it was against Kosei Fujita. <laughs> like, yeah, I they, have they to imagine it. that that was. They showed it in the video too. package. It was like Zach had nominated TMDK guys to go and fight for the. Yeah, belt. I, yeah I don't buy into it. He only. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it, he it was t- bad dude Tito as well. Like yeah. that was. I don't know. That 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 makes no sense to me. That that's a that, that like he could have heat for that. What do you mean he had others? Not nothing listed on cage match. I don't think. Maybe they no, said like in no, the no, arena. This is the but... only time. Yeah, they could have said something in the arena, but there's not. He he never defended this title outside of. Yeah, he, he had a he had a 15 minute time limit draw with Jake Oman and SCX. Maybe that was a match. Yeah, yeah you know, you know, Jake Jake Oman. Jake Oman can't lose. <laughs> He's got uh, for SCX Expo Four Parade of Champions in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Oh may, wait, maybe uh, don't don't don't, don't click on it. What was the guess? This look at hear this main event for this match of this show. Uh-huh. I, I'll give you 
I'll give you the, pr- the the promotions. It's a it's a New Japan Impact wrestler versus a Dragon Gate wrestler. New, New Japan, Japan Impact. Impact. So like, he's uh, a champion in New Japan, but he also works for Impact. Kevin Knight. No. Yeah, Kushida. Higher. I think higher, higher, higher. Oh, I thought they were champions for some reason. By the oh, way. Nick. Oh, sorry, Nick Nemeth. Nick Nemeth. Nick Nemeth versus a Dragon Gate wrestler. Nick Nemeth versus Casey? Nick Nemeth versus Ultimo Dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. That was that was did, the main did, event did of Nemeth that show. Did Nemeth get the win? Nemeth pinned him. 12.52. Nemeth pinned Ultimo Dragon for the SCX title. Oh, man. In 12.52. <laughs> you know what? This one might have been... This actually might have been the match. Because... Uh, Every other, like just about every other match on this show is for a title. Um, I don't know. Weird. EC3 versus Carson Drake. Bro, the NWA World Heavyweight title was defended fourth from the top. <laughs> the real world championship. I love wrestling. Uh, apparently, it was, the Jake o- it was the Jake Oman match. Do you know uh, Do you know Crazy Steve uh, is the TNA Digital Media Champion? Is he? Isn't he blind? Yeah. Did you know that 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 titles had uh you know that titles had eight champions already? The, the Why did they give it to champion. Kenny King? I can't imagine a less digital media champion King! than than Kenny King, social media superstar. <laughs> Kenny, King. Kenny well, they they literally um I it always make, felt bad for Kenny. That Joe Hen- I yeah, mean, Joe Hendry's like he's Hendry all over my TikTok for like for like yeah I mm. I it's kind of over with me. I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of vibing with Joe Hendry <laughs> on TikTok <laughs> right now. But what's it called? Um, Kenny Kenny King, uh, I always felt bad for because when they did the the hurt business, he was like trying so hard, like on Twitter, to like get the movie to like add him to the hurt business, and I felt bad. Yeah, he, he was like, this. "What about me, guys?" <laughs> oh, it literally, was, bro, was, literally was because they literally just did clan. the beatdown clan without him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the beatdown clan. Remember, remember this. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's finish here, folks. Uh, we had from the top another good match here. Nick Nemeth defeating the legend Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, I thought this was another really solid match. Classic Ishii stuff. Like, crazy, like you know, I didn't think it was a match of the night or anything, but uh, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we we talked about it last week, and it was the same for the the match previous. So, like this was this was a match with one of the the foreign champions that they brought in. Um, who hadn't really had like a super hot start and they'd stuck him in with, you know, one of the guys who always has good matches um, and it delivered <laughs> as expected. Um, you know, if you work Ishii and the match kind of plays out to his style, you know, it's going to be a good match. Um, and that, that was that was the case here. I, I, the only thing I was confused about was why it wasn't a, a title match. It just seemed like a decent little defense for, for, for Nick Nemeth, but, you know. Um, I still don't understand that, why. Yeah, it doesn't, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I just thought it was it was good, you know. Dolph, had, um, I always call him Dolph. <laughs> Nemeth uh, has some good strike exchange with Ishii. <laughs> Tried to match him, which obviously not many people um, <laughs> tend to do. But uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty solid all around. And um, you know, uh, but we, we we know what's next for 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 Nemeth in terms of in terms of that title. But um, it was a good it was a good match for him in, in New Japan. Probably one of his best uh, he's had so far that I've seen. Um, since he left WWE. And then we had John Moxley winning the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, a champion, a world champion in New Japan Pro Wrestling for the first time in his career. Um, he beats the current champion, champion Tetsuya Naito, who only held it for about a little over three months, uh, 99 days to be exact. And uh, I thought this was a really good match. I didn't think it was like mind-blowingly great, but it was a worthy New Japan main event. Moxley bled a lot, um, and uh, I mean the the drama of me really being invested in Moxley winning this match was uh, was what elevated it into being really great. And I'm very, we'll we'll talk about the post match in a sec, but just talking about the match itself, um, yeah, I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I love this match. 
Um, but it was, <laughs> I liked it, and it was pretty much like, um, not to sound like I'm kind of shitting on Naito, but it was pretty much all John Moxley <laughs> for, for me. It was my enjoyment <laughs> of this match. Um, you know, I, I, as you said, B, it was, it was the, the the kind of hope that he was gonna he was gonna do it. And I think the crowd were, were very much um, into that too. Uh, you know, the atmosphere definitely elevated it a lot. Um, but he just he just brings it wherever he is on on any night. You know, John Moxley's gonna gonna perform to the highest level, and uh, obviously when you stick him in in this kind of opportunity, that's that's only gonna be more so the case. And he absolutely delivered. Um, Naito, <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to see him with the. I love Naito. Naito is one of my one of my favorites, but I don't want to see him with the title again. <laughs> again I've seen a few people pitching that he's gonna like come back for it. Uh, I'm not sure, you know. No. <laughs> but um, it's, he got his moments in the Tokyo Dome. It was very nice, but that right. that's kind of all I needed to see. Um, but John Moxley as either BGP World Heavyweight Champion can only be a good thing for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I, I said that last week. Like it, it, he's done it a lot in AEW where they've kind of needed someone to. Um, steady the ship and he's jumped in and done it every single time they've asked him to and, and now New Japan is in a similar position where they need a guy to kind of carry them forward after their absence of a, of a few guys and there isn't a better guy that you could you could have in that spot than John Moxley who is like I said just always delivers um, and he's got a built in um, story with Shota Umino that I hope will lead to, to him officially becoming kind of the, the new um the new guy in in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but uh, I, a really solid main event for for what I thought it was a pretty decent show overall. I had some very very uh, very high points, mm-hmm. some low points, um, but we got the results that we all uh, really hoped for. So, you know, in, in that regard, it's it's an absolute success. The, the, the result elevated it for me from being like yeah. a pretty good show to like I really enjoyed this show. Like mm-hmm. my my mood was improved. My the future prospects around this company feel so much more. In, yeah. intriguing um moxley is one of the best wrestlers in modern american history and he's still in his prime um jetsu naito is decidedly not in his prime um so to me this was a no-brainer so glad that that he's the champion murph what did you think unbelievable match unbelievable wrestler uh it's really all you can say it was unbelievable it was great you know it, 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 unbelievable match what am i saying i, I sorry i stuttered um, it, it was a it was a pretty good match. I was more saying unbelievable. Re- I, I meant to say unbelievable result, unbelievable wrestler, and uh, you know, John Mosley, man, he's he's different. All right, so let's talk about this post match real quick. The 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 mic. He's hyped up. He's like, my my next challenger is gonna be my apprentice or you know whatever he says but then the the crazy guy ren narita of course attacks him uh shota comes out and makes the save and so we've set up a couple upcoming uh potential title defenses but i believe if i'm not losing my mind here um it is in fact john moxley versus ren narita it is yes john moxley versus ren narita in the main event of wrestling Dontaku uh, in uh, in a few weeks at the in Fukuoka, uh, Dontaku is always a big show for this promotion. It's one of the probably it's probably the sixth biggest show of the year for New Japan. Uh, always, so this is going to be the most important match of Ren Narita's career, and uh, hopefully, if Moxley retains, we get Moxley versus Shooter at uh, at Dominion in the main event. Um, but yeah, thoughts on thoughts on Narita and potentially a, a show a show to match down the line. Uh, it's an interesting one. <laughs> like Narita, um, out of all the young guys, is kind of the one who's, who's pretty much who's tailed off <laughs> a little bit in terms of where you'd kind of expect him to be. And it's obviously not helped by him being in House of Torture, <laughs> which hasn't obviously hasn't helped anyone. Um, but in there with John Moxley, who as I said, pretty much te- always tends to deliver. I think this is a real chance for him to have a great show in, in a main event level. And I, I think he kind of needs to. Um, but uh, it's one that I'll kind of, you know, um, I, I'm not sure what my expectations for that match are just because of the, the kind of gap I have between the two guys. I'm not too sure what where they're going to where they're gonna land that. Um, but it's an interesting one to go with for Mox. And obviously, obviously you know, I don't think anyone assumes that that Ren the Rita will be winning. I think we will get that um get that show to match. Um 
which is it is is the interesting thing for me because you assume shows that could be the guy to beat him. Um, but also, will Moxley have a, have a bit of a longer reign? You don't know. Um, I, I would like to see him have like an extended reign, but also I want Shota to be the guy. So we're in a tough position because it seems like it's going to be fairly soon after Narita. But yeah, the Narita match should be should be interesting, and I hope for Narita's sake he can uh, he can have a good show out there. The the other thing they could do, Forbidden Door is after Dominion, right? I'm not losing my mind. Forbidden Door is after. Yes, Dominion. yes, it's after. So so what they could do, of course, is not do Shota versus uh, uh, Moxley at Dominion. You could do like a Saber or you know a Shingo or a Gabe Kid or something like that at at Dominion, um, and then. You come back, or even you know, I wouldn't put it past them to do like a Finley, um, but uh, but then you come back and do Forbidden Door against against Umino, and then that is where Shoto Umino gets the uh, gets the belt. The only thing I'm not sure about is Forbidden Door. Frankly, like if we're being real, it's an AW show, and they incorporate New Japan, and that's the that's kind of the what what it really is, and I just don't know that they will do an actual New Japan crowning moment in you know the main event of that show it, it always feels very AEW centric to me um the uh the other thing that i that i sort of thought of is maybe as a little you know a little reward for giving for you know for AEW allowing moxley to take everything is uh Sh- shota wins the title at dominion and let's do a rematch at forbidden door um yeah. And uh, and of course, you know, Chota can win again there, or they do a draw or something like that. So where so um, anyway, I just think there's lots that they can do. I want this to end with Chota Umino winning this title from John Moxley. I think that would be optimal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, right. I I think I'd, Folks, I think I yeah go, go, go with, ahead. Sorry, I I think I tend to go with the um, I like the idea of the title change being a forbidden door. I mean, I, I'm not too sure of what like the actual like likelihood of that is. Um, but I think, you know, um, with the kind of where New Japan is at the moment, it was going to be a weird kind of imbalance thing for them coming in into this one anyway. So I think coming in with the AEW guy as champion and kind of showing that, but ending the show with New Japan getting their belt back, I think would um, mm. will, will be a great way to, to cap off the show. And I also think it will be a good way to make Forbidden Door feel more like um, a show for by both companies than yeah than, than, than an aw i think it would, it would make that a, a more of a must-see thing for you know just more fans on the calendar um than a, than a you know a kind of aw branded show so I, I like that idea but i also definitely think that that rematch idea could be could be plausible two dollars super chat from anjan he says i get shota but do mox versus zach saber jr at forbidden door and crown him I don't hate that. I don't hate that. If it's not going to be, be Shota, mad, be yeah. If it's not going to be Shota, I don't hate that. I think Moxley and Saber would have an incredible match against each other. Uh, I just don't want them to go back to Naito. Well, that's, that's all. Yeah, I, I don't, don't either. And if you'll recall, before the pandemic, you know, in a different world, this for the U.S. title that we didn't get, uh, it was it was going to be Mox versus Zack Saber Jr. So it could always go back to it. All right, everybody. This has been a good show. I, I've really enjoyed this show. You guys. It's been fun. With that being said, uh, and Murph, I know you wanted to talk about something. I think you can probably talk about it. No, 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 no. I'm going to talk about it during my, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is time for the Beast of the Week. Uh, uh, wah! Wah! Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Yeet. Uh, so uh, let's start. We always uh, we always kick off with, uh, we always did, I think really quickly, hold on. Oh no, we didn't. Actually, I skipped some super chats. We're gonna we're gonna do the beast of the week in just a yeah. sec here. Will Chisholm, five dollars. If WWE do work with with Ross, I assume he meant WWE. By the way, do work with Rossi. William Regal may have something to do with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he might. Yeah, Will. He's... I gotta be honest. I love your super chats, but every single super chat you have is like WWE working with a Joshi company. And I'm like, I don't know, bro. Just like wait until you see it happens. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't. Nothing changes until we actually get the we, announcement. 
all of all of Will's super chat seemed like he was typing it like super quickly to get it in. It's as like, well. no, <laughs> we, we'll get to it. Just take your time, you know, because he does this for the other podcast that I, I, I tune <laughs> we love you, to. Will. But, um, no, but yeah, William Regal is obviously like the, a guy that's gonna have his eyes across, um, internationally keeping up with talent. It, I assume he's got a Wrestle Universe account, you know, <laughs> so he'll, he'll be tuned in, um, you know, I, I, I imagine, but. We, we just gotta let let this thing play out with, with WWE. I, I assume there will be some real, like I think EO and Kyrie are, are gonna be there. Yeah, like I, I think that's gonna happen. So there will be some sort of relationship, um, but to the extent of that, we'll we'll find out. And then on John told us to to respect the, respect the scapegoat. Jack yeah. is greater than Phil. Hashtag Jack owns Chicago. I agree with everything it's you said. Him. On John. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. Uh, all right, piece of the week for realsies. I think collectively, it's Mox. It's Mox. Mox. He won the fucking world title. He did what we wanted. All three of us desperately wanted that title change. Yeah. And he made it happen in beast like fashion with bleeding everywhere and shooting a post match oh. angle and everything like that. So, Jamie, kick a door, beast of the week. Yeah. Now, you may think you know who my beast of the week is going to be, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> but you're not far off. Because it is a marigold related individual. My beast of the week, controversially perhaps, is Fuka, um, <laughs> who made the move, um, was poached <laughs> from, from <Akuma. laughs> poached. They, they took um, a giant net and then they covered her up and then they brought her to Marigold. Yeah, they, they you know, they abducted her and, and six other other talents, and then they all appeared to the press conference very happy about it. Um, <laughs> but, now, Fuka, oh, I, I, I talked about what she's going to bring to the promotion when we earlier in the podcast, but she's beast of the week because, um, you know, actress put out that statement, and it's you know they they they, they start to slander <laughs> her name, and then you know about a day later they they put out another statement, and we're like, actually, we were fucking lying. <laughs> and Fuka was like, I told you, you know, <laughs> I told you. Um, it's like actress didn't have contracts. What did they expect to happen? They all mm. left on their own volition. Like, and 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 wrestlers should be allowed to like go where they want to go. So, so it's like it's it's not it's it's not some sort of um, you can think what you want about the time and of when they told actress they were leaving or whatever. But I don't, I don't buy into this was some kind of devious <laughs> like you know dirty move from all involved. So for that reason, Fuka's my beast of the week and i'm very fired up that she'll be involved in marigold i very nearly uh, voted for chad gable who i watched last night and uh because uh this was because he was in the second best match i saw all week um i thought it was awesome yesterday on, on raw i thought he was great in the main event and uh and the post-match stuff tool oh man the team with the creeds bro like I, I fucking love the creeds dude like julius mm -hmm. in particular they're so great um however that was not the best match i saw over the last week the best match i saw over the last week took place at cork and hall it was the main event of a pro wrestling noah show yeah no it was not hayata winning the ghc national championship <laughs> um which is crazy by the way like what no my uh my beast of the week is a rare instance where I watched a Keno singles match and I thought the other guy was better in the match. Yeah. Uh, my beast of the week is Kaito Kiyomiya, who beat mm -hmm. Keno and uh, did so in exhilarating fashion. I thought Kaito was on fire in this match. It was one of his best performances I've seen in a long time from him. So I'm very proud to have Kaito Kiyomiya as my beast of the week. I love it. Yeah. It's fun since I went Jack Perry two weeks in a row and I'm not going in this week. But, I mean, that's life here. <laughs> My beast of the week uh, is from a sh from Corrigan Hall. The best match I saw this week at Corrigan Hall. Um, best two matches, actually. And it was probably the best show this promotion has put on since the pandemic. It was um, from Dragon Gates Corrigan this week. I'm giving it to Team No Hug, which is uh, Dragon Kid and the Rookie Doi. Uh, they are my beast of the week because they just put on the most tremendous match first they had their match against you know the actual uh big hug and th that match was that match was pretty dang good uh and honestly they just they were able to beat them and then in the main event they faced susumu yokosuka who's yokosuka again uh in yamato 
So um, in, in this match was just unbelievable. And they're going to go on to face uh, Kaito Kiyomiya and Alejandro at uh, Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive, which has a great card. The cage match is back. Uh, in, in Dragon Gate, uh, they, they've, ever since they turned Jason Lee heel two weeks ago, they've actually been putting a lot of great shows together. Uh, so my be- team of the week, my beast of the week, is the team, team No Hug, uh, Dragon Kid. Bro, I did not know Jason Lee joined Zebrats until you said that. What, what the fuck? <laughs> Zebrats? Dude. Zebrats, parenthesis. Shun with Skywalker, Ishin, and Jason Lee. What? And, and Johnny. Johnny. Oh, G- oh yeah, Johnny Valletta. Johnny Valletta. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> no, Jason Lee has been... Jason Lee, the, the, if you watch it, it was in Sambo where they did the turn. The pot, the heat. Oh, my God. It was, it was oh, just, boo, like, insane. Boo, Jason, Jason, Jason Hall. No, no it, it was more like... <gasps> it, it, it was pretty great. But whenever Murph picks a, a a Dragon Gate guy or, or team or whatever for the for the Beast of the Week, and obviously everyone everyone I assume everyone knows that it's me that does the the Beast of the Week thing. It kind of, it annoys me slightly. It's a minor inconvenience in my day <laughs> because I like to use photos from the events that they got the Beast of the I'll, Week. I'll, from. S- I'll send you so, a photo, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I always feel like I'm going to end up taking one without credit and like a photographer because <laughs> uh, there's not as many of <laughs> photos available. <laughs> these Dragon no, Gate they, I have I have Dragon Gate posted a photo from it, so I'll I'll send you a picture. Yeah, you you, <laughs> you got it. Nice one. But that's that's my only thing. Yeah. All right, everybody. Oh. That's going to do it this week. John Moxley, Fuka, Kaito Kiyomita, and. Uh, oh, who did you actually pick? Uh, Kid and Doy. Kid and Doy. Okay, the team. The team. All right. So, uh, yes, Kid and Doy. No hug to, to counterbalance. The, the... Thank you all so much for watching this week. We will be back next week previewing one of the biggest stardom shows all year. Uh, and have some more lineups and stuff for up tours and the like. So, yeah. Uh, for Jamie, for Murph, I'll catch you next time. Stay dumb. Thank you.